So I'm going to challenge anybody out there who is dealing with an abusive situation like this. You know, get mad. Get mad and do something about it. Because here's the thing is one caveat today. Don't do something about it that's going to get you landed in jail. Okay. <laughs> no. 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 Not a good idea. Uh, you want to continue your life. You want to build your life. You you don't know. Mm -mm. So that's my caveat on that. So I have a dentist appointment tonight. I'm sitting <laughs> I don't want to go in. Um, it's not for a while anyway. I don't really want to go home and then come back in like half an hour. So. Uh, we're going to get more of me talking here. Uh, yeah. Get angry about it. And stay angry about it. Because the thing with the abuser is that they will act like it never happened. You know? And then they can get you to gaslight yourself the way they gaslight you. And then everything just kind of gets swept under the rug. And then you have the resentment. But you kind of wonder if you're in the wrong. Like, am I the asshole? You know? Uh, no. You know, get angry and stay angry. And let that anger drive you toward getting out. And if you're already out, you know, avoid dwelling on it as much as you can. But at the same time, don't sweep that under the rug. You know, if you have gotten out of a relationship like that, I really, 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 really want you to go to therapy. Uh, and if you're in a relationship like that, really, really, really go to therapy, please. Um, I can't, I can't recommend it enough, but find a good therapist. Because the wrong therapist will give you the wrong advice because they're not equipped. Uh, so look for somebody who uh, has trauma training and or uh, training in uh, abuse, uh, narcissistic personality disorder, things like that, uh, domestic violence, domestic abuse. So yeah, um, you know, staying like super angry, angry long term is not ideal. It's not. It's not the best way to go. Uh, but anger can move you forward into the next steps. Uh, there are times I still, I still get angry. You know, I don't act on it. I don't internalize it either. You know, I recognize it. I see it for what it is. I'm like, oh, hmm, there's some energy in this. How do I use this? <laughs> do I, you know, do a deep clean on my, uh, on my apartment? Ah, hey, you know, um, do I go for a run? Yeah, hey, yeah, maybe, sure. But, you know, anger was the thing that moved me forward. It's like, I've had enough of this. I've had enough. I cannot take any more of it. I can't. I'm done. You know, and then when things just went really sideways, uh, after I got away, you know, and I didn't have a place to stay anymore, and, you know, my ex had told me, well, I thought if this wasn't an option anymore, then you'd realize how good you had it and come back to me. I lost it. I freaking, I lost it on him. Of course, you know, we're thousands of miles apart, but I'm just like, mm, no, I'm done. I'm done with you. I'm done with the other person. I am done with, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. You know, I'm one of those people too. When, when I reach that point, I'm done. There's no coming back from that. None. Like it's, if you've heard of the INFJ door slam, it's that. Because I'm, 
you know, there's, I, I will tolerate a lot from somebody if I can continue to give them the benefit of the doubt reasonably. And I, I went way past being reasonable and giving the benefit of the doubt to uh, my abuser. That was one of my mistakes. That's one of the things I've learned from. And, you know, that I guess leads to one of my other whys is, or house is, uh, you know, I have a lot of life experience. I have a lot of life experience making uh, decisions in relationships that are not healthy in terms of protecting myself. You know, I, I grew up being very generous and giving. Uh, I ended up being taken advantage of multiple times, but, uh, you know, I continued to see the best in people and that really, really bit me in the butt. I didn't have, uh, good boundaries. I didn't understand that. You know, I was, I was just desperate trying to survive and hoping that somebody, anybody actually cared about me because I was very alone, uh, at the point in my life where the abuser found me. So ideal conditions for a predator, but I learned a lot. I learned a lot. I have gained a lot of skills and a lot of knowledge and understanding and just general experience. Um, so with that, you know, I want to be able to share that with other people. I am in such a secure place now. I'm in so much of a better place. I, you know, I don't know if you guys can tell just from me talking, uh, but I don't, I don't have the anxiety that I had from being in an abusive relationship. That's something that in everyday life does not affect me anymore. It's not a problem. I have really grown in my stability, in my emotional intelligence, in my uh, just confidence. Keys. <laughs> and I know where I was five, six years ago. I know what I've been through. I know what I'm still dealing with in terms of not being able to have any sort of meaningful contact with my kiddo and continuing to have to deal with the abuser in their withholding and their accusations and their narrative that's preventing that, that meaningful contact. Um, You know, it's, it's something that I continue to have to cope with, to deal with. And it's not easy. It's definitely not easy. And I know I'm not the only one dealing with it. Oh, it's hard. It's hard when you have kids with somebody like that. Because you have your, you have your parenthood basically stripped from you. Like, oh, you're not a parent anymore. This is not your child anymore. That's what's basically being said to you. So you know what? I choose not to live by that. I choose not to live by what the abuser is telling me and has told me. 
So yeah, I'm going to school in a double, double major in child development and psychology. I'm really close to getting my associates. And I'm going to continue. Because I want to be able to help people and children. You know, adults and children. Children and people too, obviously. But who have gone through or are going through what I have and am going through right now. Um, and I'm having to deal with right now. There are not enough resources out there. There are not enough people who are trained in this stuff. That's one of my whys. Because I know how much it would have helped me to be able to have somebody who understood exactly what was going on and helped me to start to move through that. Now my current therapist is very knowledgeable and we've had many discussions about this stuff and he's helped me so much. And unfortunately the therapist I had uh, while I was with the abuser was not familiar with the types of domestic abuse that were happening. And, you know, I was afraid to tell her. I was afraid of how the abuser would react because I knew it wouldn't be good. It was terrifying. It was honestly terrifying. So, you know, I, uh, I spoke with her again recently and she told me, she was like, hey, you know, this what you were going through is, is this, and, you know, it's narcissistic abuse and domestic abuse. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was, <laughs> I've been, I've been learning about it too. Um, so therapists have, have played a huge role in my, in my recovery too. They've played a huge role in helping me to see what's going on, helping me to recognize my patterns, my beliefs, and the things that I'm doing, thinking and believing that are not serving in my best interest, that are not helping me, and, you know, are keeping me from moving forward or growing. And we work through that stuff. So I really really want to be able to help other people in that way. Uh, I, you know, I, I don't know. I've, I've always had a fascination with psychology. Um, I've been encouraged to pursue it and, you know, I plan to, I, I really do. Uh, there is another career I also do want to pursue, maybe not long term, like not 20 years worth, <laughs> um, but at least a few good years to get to get the time and experience. Because I feel like um, I would be able to do good work in that field. So. We'll see how that goes. We'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens with it, but uh, a lot of that just it uh, depends on me. So, do I have the self discipline to do what I need to do? Well, I've got the self discipline to do what I'm doing right now. So, probably yes. Uh, I just need to do it. So, if there's anything that you're procrastinating on or not doing. Just go do it. <laughs> you will think yourself out of it uh, and you will make excuses for why you couldn't or shouldn't or whatever. Just go do it. Just go do it. <sighs> Easily said, I know, but the thing that gets me moving is not thinking about, oh, all the ways that I have to prepare for this or, oh, uh, you know, this or that. Or No, it's just, okay, where's my stuff? Throw it on. I'm going. I'm going. Okay. I'm doing the thing. Don't nuke it. You don't need to. 
Anyway. Oh, I'm tired. It's been a very long day. And, uh, you know, another thing too, another, another one of my whys is, uh, so if my daughter ever does want to, um, seek me out because I'm, you know, I can't force myself into, uh, a position where she sees me as her mother again. I can't force that. You know, she's got somebody else who is, who is to her, as far as I am told, who is her mother now. And it's not me. I'm just the biological. But if, if my daughter ever does want to look me up if she ever is curious about who I am you know the the other half of herself and of course she's her own person I absolutely absolutely but you know we are made of the halves of our parents and if she ever wants to know I want her to know I want her to know her potential you know, I want her to know what her mother is capable of. And it's not what she was told. I want her to know that her mother was capable of, or is, you know, if it's in my lifetime. I want her to know that that her mother was capable of doing all of this. Of going to school. Of going to school more than full time and working more than full time at the same time. To improve herself and improve her situation. And I want her to know that she is capable of doing the same. I want her to, I want her to know that her mother is somebody who cares very much. And he wants to help other people too. He never, ever, ever gave up on her. So that's part of my why. You know, for people who are in this recovery thing, uh, who don't have kids, you gotta find your own why. You gotta find something that means something to you. You know, I've got my kiddo. I've got my life that I'm building. And yeah, there are parts of it that aren't ideal. But I love the fact that I am doing this with my life. I wouldn't have survived if I had stayed. I know that. It was the hardest choice I've ever had to make. But I knew that I wanted my daughter to have a healthy mother. <sighs> and I couldn't do that if I wasn't alive. So, you know, some of this, some of this video stuff is just documentation for her to know who I am and what I believe in and what I care about. You know, I want her to see some of that journey. Unfortunately, I know that she can't right now, but maybe sometime in the future. And, uh, she needs to know that she's worth fighting for and never giving up on. I think we all need to know that. Yeah, I've had a lot of people give up on me. I've had a lot of people turn away from me. I've had a lot of people disbelieve me. But I've also had the ones who did believe me and who did stand by me and who are still there. And to those people, I say thank you because 
you are so much of the reason why I am where I am and why I'm making the progress that I am. So, you guys wanted to know why um, and who I'm doing all this for. So, now you know. All right, guys. I gotta go to the dentist. Uh, all right, bye. <laughs>